All right, what's going on, Fishaholics? So, got some new packages here, and uh, I figured since uh, today, I guess, is like the official end of the Montauk fishing season for me, or not the official end, I mean the official working end of the season. Basically, like the chartering uh, trips are pretty much done. And I got a bunch of packages, and uh, it's kind of easy to see what uh, two of those items are, but I also got two other packages that subscribers sent to me. And uh, I kind of want to open them up, show you guys what I got on camera, and uh, we're just going to go all around Montauk just looking for fish. I got to pick up my VS250, and uh, I got to put these in the car, and then also I got to ship out uh, two other items that sadly I can't use anymore, and hopefully I can get them repaired, or hopefully I can get a new one. So we're just going to go for a ride. First, we got to go to Pauly's Tackle and uh, see if my reel is ready. So I guess we can uh, kind of consider this my first ever like vlogish type video. So uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Trying something different. <laughs> Jesus. It's like a crazy sandbank right here. The high tide was all the way up here, I guess, last night. And it pushed the sand all the way up to these stairs. But uh, yeah, I had to come to the beach before I went to the tackle shop to check it out. Really dirty water. Two guys fishing down there. One guy was fighting a fish for like. 10 minutes or fighting a stingray, I don't know what it was, but uh, water really does not, the water does not look good here. It looks like brownish, it's dirty. Let's see if we can get back up the sand, ba uh, sand bank. Whoa! Whew. That's like a six foot drop. Let's go to the tackle shop, see if my reel is ready. Whew. All right, so I went into Pauly's and uh, I actually had a bad bearing in uh, my VS250, uh, and um, I guess Paulie didn't get the part yet, so he's having the part shipped out. I guess it's gonna get here today, and he's gonna fix it up for me. I think I haven't had my van stall serviced in like two and a half years, <laughs> so it was getting a little rough on the reel. It was time to get it, uh, you know, cleaned up. But uh, you know, this video probably starting off a little choppy. Um, you know, I really don't know exactly where it's going. I know I'm gonna fish, but uh, I kind of just want to do a little bit of explaining because I feel like, uh, you know, throughout the season, you know, me living out here in Montauk, I make a lot of videos, but I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, explaining of like what's going on, you know. So uh, this video is kind of just like a recap, I guess, of the season. And, uh, you know, if you didn't know, I've had my whole summer out here in Montauk because I work on the A to K, it's a charter boat out here. And uh, I'm constantly fishing, whether I'm, working fishing or whether you know I'm just fishing after work so I, I might do 12 hour days you know all weekend long and somehow manage to get out after and I'll fish in the kayak and you know fish till 2 a.m. wake up at 6 a.m. and do the whole same thing over again and uh, by the time it gets to around August then I start filming less and less just because I've, I've already done that grind for like June and July and I'm like dead so um, now I'm finally getting like some energy back because like once October comes the charters slow down and I'm actually able to fish so today I'm just gonna kind of go over some of my surf rods some new surf rods that I got and then I guess uh, some packages that uh, some subscribers sent to me and um, you know maybe just give you guys a little bit of uh, fishing update of what I caught last night or what I've been catching and we're probably gonna first uh, start off we're gonna go to uh, the north side and check out a beach and see if there's any albies. We've got a north wind today. All right, so we're checking out Fort Pond right now. The albies get blown into here, so you can just you know drive along the beach and look for you know fish breaking. I'm not seeing too much. It's just really, really windy though. And the water is actually dirty here. Where usually, if it's dirty on the south side, it's clean over here. But uh, I think the wind was really, really cranking last night. 
So that's why it made the water dirty. It's been churning for, you know, a few hours. To ship this baby out. And uh, for all my fly fans out there, I snapped in half the 10 weight sage in uh, probably the silliest way I've ever snapped a rod. And I kind of don't even want to go into details. I'll, sh I'll show a little clip on how it happened, but it just happened and this rod is older than me. It was my father's fly rod and it's a 10 weight sage. I'm gonna pray that, you know, I can put it in the box, ship it back to sage and they'll send me a new one, you know, so I'm out of commission. You know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video, just kind of trying to kind of just to explain that, you know, I can't make any fly videos now because I don't have a, a fly rod for the Islander. So this is gonna go in that box there. And then if you guys are unaware, I also snapped my triumph about a month ago. So I had my friend Mike uh, go to a tackle shop out west and pick up the Mojo Surf. And this is the nine foot medium power, moderate action, three quarter to four ounce, 10 to 20 pound line. So far, I'm, I'm really happy I got this rod. It's a really great rod. And I actually took it out last night and I caught uh, you know, a bunch of stripers uh, on an outgoing tide off uh, the north side using just like this little gold darter. And uh, this is all they would touch last night, and I caught fish, you know, up into uh, the low 30 inch range, like 34 inches, and then, uh, you know, a bunch of schoolies. But uh, after I bought this rod, um, then, you know, I was, you know, I was, I was ha happy as a clam. I had two rods, uh, one for the van stall, one for the tsunami shield, and then Ramsey's sent me this rod. Ramsey Outdoor sent me this, eight foot eight inches, 12 to 20 pound and lower half to two ounces. So this action on this rod is very similar to the action of the Triumph, actually almost identical. This, you know, like, again, this is half to two and a half ounce and eight to 20 pound. So um, the only difference really is this Tsunami Airwave's a little thinner, but, um, you know, has the same action, different grip on it. And, um, you know, this would be perfect for throwing, say, small bucktails and uh, small plugs in moderate surf, you know, not too heavy stuff. I wouldn't take this below the lighthouse and fish for stripers, especially say if I get into like, you know, 30, 40 pounders, or, you know, if I'm fishing on any big jetty and I get into 30, 40 pounders, this'll be like a really light stick to have. So a subscriber, I guess, found out that uh, I broke my Triumph and uh, he watched like many, many videos of me using the Triumph and catching a ton of fish so he liked the rod and was like, hey, I'm gonna buy two of them. So he ended up buying two of them. And I guess the last couple of years, he's, um, you know, used that rod and caught a lot of fish. So I guess I kind of just ruined the, you know, ruined the surprise, but he wanted to uh, send me a gift. And uh, his name is Joe and I think, he's, I think he's from California. So he sent me a fishing rod all the way from California to Montauk just to thank me for my videos which Joe thank you so much that's like unbelievable all right feels nice I, I love the the triumph and um, thanks again Joe I, I can't believe you, you just sent me a fishing rod a surf rod so these two packages here also I think are gonna be flies because uh, some more subscribers sent them to me so that was also another reason why I wanted to explain that I have, the, I have the flies that you sent, but I can't fish with them because my fly rod's broken and uh, like it kind of sucks, but you know, let's crack this open and uh, see what we got here. So Michael from uh, New York sent me a bunch of these gorgeous flies. Look at these right here. Those would absolutely annihilate the false albacore, striped bass, and uh, Mike, this is killing me right now because I snapped my fly rod. This is, these, oh, these, these would kill the albies. All the albies this year are feeding on small little tiny bay anchovies or rain bait, just like that. And that would be a perfect match the hatch type fly. And then there's also some larger flies in here that uh, I'm assuming by the time I get back to Jersey, my fly rod will be you know sent back or I'll buy a new one. So I'll be able to fish these maybe for some big bass because I still want that 20 pounder on the fly rod. This was sent to me from Bob from New Jersey. Ooh. Okay, so Bob put his card in there. Uh, Tideline Custom Tackle. So I'm assuming 
he made all these plugs by hand. And I thought they were gonna be flies, but these are some really awesome plugs right here. Look at that nice popper right there. And then there's another one here also. And this plug looks to be around two ounces, two and a half ounces. So a little bit bigger uh, profile than this yellow one. But uh, th that brings me again to the whole situation where I want to be able to throw a smaller plug and then if I can, throw on a larger plug and that's where I can take any one of those four rods and I can switch between two plugs like this and feel totally comfortable and uh, you know, I don't want to be throwing a plug where the rod is bent <laughs> almost in a U. You know, that's not the way the rod is supposed to be used. You want to be casting that rod with a slight bend in it and um, you know, these plugs here are perfect that I could probably cast way out there a mile and uh, use any of those rods that I showed you. But then also still be able to cast, say, a small little spoon or a small little bucktail if the fish are on small bait. And uh, Bob here sent me a little note, pretty long note. I'll probably read this on the side, but thanks again, Bob, for the plugs. Thanks again, Joe, for the rod. And thanks again, Mike, for the flies. So I got some great stuff. I'm gonna pack all this stuff back up in the car and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do some fishing because I don't want to bore you guys with the rest of this video so we're gonna try and catch some fish tide is really low which actually I think that'll be good we'll catch the very end of the uh, beginning of the incoming that'll bring in some fish the best way to fish this area is definitely to have some corkers on and you never know you might get a big fish you're gonna have to go down and get them the only way to get them is with uh, getting down by the water, by the slippery rocks. I'm just going to start off swimming this little swim bait right along the rocks. That's where the fish are going to be. The bait's along the rocks and the fish are cruising along the rocks looking for the bait. Today with how windy it is, you might even have albies, you know, pop up right inside the inlet. They get blown in here sometimes with a, with a north wind. All right, oh man, I give up on this spot. It must be only like 50 degrees out here today. It's freezing. And just to think last night I was fishing till 11 p.m. I was like swimming out to a rock, standing in the surf, getting beat up in the waves. But I was actually comfortable, it was warm. The water was warm, the air was warm, and now it's like 20 degrees colder. The temperature just like plummeted. Ugh. I don't know what we're gonna do, but I'm getting hungry and I'm cold. Maybe we'll go to that side. Maybe we'll check out another spot on the south side. We're at spot number two, and uh, you guys are probably wondering, where is this video going? I don't, I don't even know where it's going. I might, I might as well just make you guys name the video for me because I have no idea. But I kind of just wanted to uh, show you, I guess, what goes behind the scenes of the videos that I upload. You know, what goes on before I upload those videos. I guess is a good way to put it. And this is pretty much what I do. I drive around to a bunch of different spots try fishing, trying to get on, hot, on a hot bite, and then usually what I do is I upload like a fraction of my day, usually of when I catch fish and, you know, that little experience. But today, I don't know, I decided to change it up and hopefully it's not too boring, hopefully you guys enjoy. I went to 7-Eleven, got these, you know, Go Yum Honey Glazed Candy Pecans, they're pretty good. I mean, hopefully I taught you guys uh, to get that from 7-Eleven, but um, yeah, this is the back of my messy, messy blazer. Uh, we're going to grab the light tackle and shore mojo, get out there. Look at this current though. This current looks freaking amazing. It's kind of coming in and then it's twirling around because it hits that point over there. So with this incoming current, there should be some bait being pushed in right around that point and coming in this way. Should be some fish following. Might be stripers, might be albies, might be bluefish. Might be, you know, maybe a weak fish. I don't know. Could be anything, but uh, yeah, I gotta clean that car up. A lot of cormorants in the water. 
that's a good sign that there's probably some bait. If there's bait, there's fish. Always remember that, always remember that. Today's a good day just because the water's probably really churned up, stirred up. It might be able to trick some of these fish that are here. A lot of times this water is really clean and really clear. So you need to fish a fly to get a bite. Oh, there's one. Found one. Little guy, crushed the swim bait. Nice little fella. Wrong way, there you go, bud. There we go. That was actually kind of cool because I saw him come out of that deeper water and crush the swim bait. All right, so that gives me some confidence there that there's definitely some more fish here. Hopefully we can find a couple bigger ones, you know, maybe like, you know, borderline keeper size would be nice on this light little rod. But uh, I kind of let that little swim bait just sink to the bottom until I felt the current drag it along. And then I kind of was just popping it, letting the current drag it back, popping it, let the current drag it back, popping it, let the current drag it back. And then I kind of swam it right into this shallow little pocket here where the current from over there kind of comes back and hits this current again. You can kind of see like a line. You can see where it gets a little bit ripply. And that fish hit it like right here. Right there, that's where that fish hit it. Okay, before I make a move, I was thinking about going to that point over there. I'm going to switch over to a little quarter ounce bucktail. Even though it's really windy, you know, it's going to be challenging to cast it, but and it's going to be challenging to get it down near the bottom, but I think that's going to be the ticket. And then I'm also going to tie direct because uh, the water is still pretty clean, even though it's really windy and the wind is, you know, churning up the bottom. There's still some pretty good visibility. And if there's one striper like that here, there's probably more. Okay, I'm going to tip this little bucktail with a little cut pork rind. If I didn't have pork rind, I'd probably use a little swim bait or you know, maybe a little curly tail grub. It would all work the same pretty much. You just want a little bit of tail action. No way, no way. I just saw an Albie back here. No freaking way. Albies are breaking in this little funnel here. Oh, I gotta take the bucktail. Oh my gosh, they're going off, they're going off. try a little deadly dick this is what I was hoping I was hoping this wind would push them in here and they're getting pushed in you never know what you're gonna see unless you get out there oh now where'd you go where'd you go oh they're still pushed up right there They're right inside here by this white boat. Got a little deadly dick on, hopefully they'll hit it. Come on, Albies, come back up, pop back up. Things just got real intense real quick.
Oh, they're right there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Popped up right in front of me. Really good sign though, really good sign. Oh, oh a little short. Come on, I gotta get one of these things. Look at this, insanity. Insanity. Now is when I should have the fly rod, and of course I don't have it. Don't have one. They're hanging in here. Oh, I just got hit, just got railed. Just got hit, surprise hit. They're hanging right in here where this water is funneling. Come on, come on, come on back. I've never seen Albies in here like this, never. That's good though that I got a bite because this year the Albies have been like super finicky. So to get some kind of reaction, that's good, that's good. Whew. All right, nothing like a little Albi action, get your blood flowing, but they kind of disappeared. So I threw the bucktail back on because bass is definitely more of a sure thing. Ah, oh, but dang though, I had one hit and then they disappeared. It's like they knew that I was like onto them. Oh, fish on. This fish is pulling pretty good. A little bit bigger bass than my first one. A little surprise. I'll take it. Whoo! Look at that stripe of shining in the sun. That's why it's a smarter option to th go back to the bucktail than hang around waiting for the Albies to show back up. Pretty little fish. Pretty sunset. Whew! This little guy hit it a couple times until I got him. Little fella. See you later, dude. Okay, that's it for us today. Didn't catch a lot of fish, but we caught fish and we saw some fish. Almost caught an Albie. Look at that sky right there. It's crazy, that color. Oh, I wish I had that Albie though. Man, that would have like, like made the day right there just to get one like little tuna like that. Especially in this area, I've never seen Albies, um, you know, in this inlet right here. I've only seen them like you know, on the north side, like in more wide open areas. I've never seen them in such a enclosed area. It was crazy. And they were just like, they were erupting and creating so much mayhem. It was insane. But uh, at least we got the stripers. So we caught something on the little bucktail. Oh wait, except for the one I caught on a little swim bait. So uh, yeah, I mean, decent little outing. And I was thinking maybe I should do something like this once a week if you guys like this video a lot. You know, kind of just like goes behind the scenes on, you know, how I make my videos kind of like probably today I would probably scrap this footage. I wouldn't even make a video because I didn't get I didn't get the Albi. I only caught a couple little stripers, so uh, it wouldn't be like anything too special, but it still kind of was uh, an interesting, you know, regular day like in the life of a fisherman. So anyway, thanks for watching and never forget live to fish, fish to live, and I'll see you guys in the next one.